Hi students, so let us continue with the malaria topic. So I was talking about malarial parasite life cycle and we have com uh, completed the first two stages which happens in human body. So let us continue with the same life cycle of human uh, pa malarial parasite in human body. The third stage of it that is gametogony. So we already discussed pre-erythrocytic schizogony then erythrocytic schizogony now we have the third stage that is gametogony in gametogony what happens some of the merozoids which are already released it, in, in, it, it is not going to attack new rbc it will be transforming into gametocyte now in blood vessels it happens in blood vessels of the internal organ example spleen bone marrow now these gametocytes are round but except in plasmodium falciparum in plasmodium falciparum it will be crescent or banana shaped now what are the two types of gametocytes which are formed one is male or microgametocyte second one is female or macrogametocyte in my male or microgametocytes you can see numerous in number where when you do the staining it appears the cytoplasm as deep blue and the nucleus will be red but small and compact when you see the female gametocyte that is macrogametocyte cytoplasm stains pale blue and the nucleus will be red but it will be larger and diffused and number of macrogametocytes will be fewer so this is the difference between male and female gametocyte so here the malarial parasite completes its life cycle in human body so final products are macrogametocytes and microgametocyte so here is a table which will tell you what are the three difference between or what are the three stages and what are the difference. So we have pre-erythrocytic schizogony, erythrocytic schizogony, gametogony which we have discussed already. Pre-erythrocytic schizogony happens in liver, erythrocytic schizogony happens in peripheral blood except plasmodium falciparum where only ring form can be seen in the peripheral blood. Gametogony happens in blood vessels of internal organs but once the gametocytes are formed it may move to peripheral blood. Stay changes happening pre-erythrocytic schizogony sporozoids are formed which are uh, which are entering and as a spindle shaped structure which become trophozoid and later become merozoids inside schizone. Merozoids attack RBC which are pear shaped it becomes ring stage later it becomes late trophozoid and finally erythrocytic schizone with rosetti or merozoids. Now these merozoids some of them will keep attacking the RBCs but some of them will turn to male or female gametocyte. So this is what happens in human body after you get a mosquito bite which contains the malarial parasite. This is the cycle where you can see the sporozoids spindle shape entering into the liver where it will go through the stages finally release merozoids. Now this merozoids enter into RBC where you can see the cycle continues attacking the new RBC but some of them will turn to gametocytes. Now the second part of the life cycle that is what happens in mosquito when a mosquito bite an infected patient mosquito cycle so while taking the blood when a uh, blood meal malarial parasite enter into the mosquito's body now while taking the meal the mosquito can take both asexual and sexual forms it's not necessary only gametocyte will enter into the mosquito but asexual forms get digested sexual forms undergo development so minimum 12 malarial parasite gametocyte required per cubic millimeter of the blood to infect a mosquito now what will happen to this sexual forms or gametocytes in case of microgametocyte it will undergo exflagellation what is that the gametocyte undergo the exflagellation to form eight flagellated actively motile forms we can call it as microgamete in female gametocyte it becomes mature and be uh, turns to macrogamete or female gamete so after the entry gametocytes both micro and macro gametocytes became microgamete and macrogamete respectively then what happens in the midgut of the mosquito these microgamete macrogamete undergo fertilization after fer this fertilization occur usually after 30 to uh, 30 minutes to 2 hours after the blood meal now these non motile round zygote it may transform into ukinate which are the vermicular motile elongated form these ukinate penetrate the stomach wall of the mosquito which are present in the uh, mosquito midgut it will penetrate then lies beneath the basement membrane which we call as oocystage 
oocyst stage was discovered by Ronald Rose. Now the oocyst undergoes sporogony that is a sexual life cycle happening in mosquito and the spindle shaped sporozoids are formed as a result. Now these oocysts rupture all the sporozoids migrate to the salivary gland. That means the parasite which entered as gametocyte into the mosquito will come to the salivary gland in the form of sporozoid. These sporozoids are infective. So when this mosquito bite another human being for their blood meal, these sporozoids enter and the complete life cycle happens again in the man. So this is the life cycle for the malarial parasite inside the mosquito and inside the human body. Now what is extrinsic incubation period? That is a time taken for this malarial parasite after entry into the mosquito how it turns to sporozoids how much time it took that is the extrinsic incubation period in case of vivac species 8 to 10 days in case of falciparum species it is 9 to 10 days so this is what happens in the life cycle of malarial parasite it got two hosts one is intermediate host man is the intermediate host another one is definitive host mosquito is the definitive host so this is the whole cycle where you can see the man in the center and the mosquito bite. So once the man get the mosquito bite, how the malarial parasite leaves those sporozoids inside. Sporozoids undergo pre-erythrocytic cycle first, then it goes to erythrocytic cycle where you can see also exoerythrocytic cycle where the hypnozoids of plasmodium vivax enter into RBC and start the relapse of the infection. Then once a pre-erythrocytic cycle is completed, it goes to erythrocytic cycle, again it go to gametogony. Once the gametogony is done, the gametocytes are ready for take uh, mosquitoes, mosquito come and pick it up from the human body and again the continuation of the life cycle happens in mosquito and it leads to sporozoid. Pathogenesis. Now what happens because of this how human beings suffer from the infection it's a triad. Benign malaria is a triad of febrile paroxysm, anemia and splenomegaly. Now in febrile paroxysm it depends on the species. For example plasmodium vivax, plasmodium falciparum we see is a tertian malaria third day it happens and that indicate the end of that RBC cycle. Whenever the merozoids rupture the RBC and comes out patients start developing the fever which will have three stages. First initial cold stage followed by hot stage then sweating stage. So in the during the cold stage patient complains about headache, nausea, cold chill and rigor that happens around 15 minutes to 1 hour. Followed by hot stage patient says high grade of fever with headache then sweating stage for 2 to 4 hours. So this happens during febrile paroxysm. It depends on the species when it will start appearing. Now because of this what will happen is nomocytic nomochromic anemia. Anemia is the second uh, symptom. There will be splenical removal of both infected non-infected RBC. There will be bone marrow suppression which will lead to the reduction in the number of uh, new RBC formed which will lead to nomocytic nomochromic anemia. Along with that you can see splenomegaly which is the massive proliferation of macrophages. Now what will happen if the patient gets infection with plasmodium falciparum malaria? This will lead to malignant malaria as we have seen. What happens? There will be large number of merozoids which are produced in the hepatocytes by this species. Second thing, heavy parasites RBCs become deformed, sticky and it adhere into the endothelial capillaries in the internal organ. What is the result? It will lead to cerebral malaria where you can find hemorrhage and necrosis, black water fever that is extensive hemolysis happens where the kidney is damaged, hemoglobin in, in, the, in urine that is hemoglobinuria with hemoglobin pigments and black color urine. Along with that, pernicious anemia, that is because of the loss of RBCs and presence of autoantibody, septicemic malaria involving many organs, pulmonary edema in the lungs, hypoglycemia because the glucose consumption by the malarial parasite. So these are the complications we are expecting in a patient who is infected with Plasmodium falciparum malaria. Benign malaria will have three stages, that is we have seen the triad, but in case of Plasmodium falciparum, it led to malignant malaria. So this is what we have to know about plasmodium falciparum and plasmodium vivax species its life cycle and its pathogenesis thank you